They should have stood apart, away from each other, those two neat houses. There should have been a lofty impenetrable wall between them, so that they should not stare so coldly, so starkly at each other. Just staring, not saying a word, not even a cruel word. They stood there on the roadside, they two alone, neighborless but for themselves, and they were like two stealthy shadows, each avid to betray the other. From the road these houses feared no enemy, no enemy from the length, from the dust of the road. They were unfenced, but of each other they were afraid. But something happened, and the fence was built. Two women had built that fence. One of them, Aling Biang, had caught her husband with her neighbor, Aling Sebyo, one night. The next morning, she had gone to the bamboo clumps near the river Pasig and felled canes with her woman's strength. And the next morning, she began to build the fence. Her husband noticed her, but said nothing. But by noon, Aling Biang was driving tall bamboo splits into the narrow ribbon of yard. And then even Aling Sebia, her neighbor, asked inoffensively, What are you doing, Aling Biang? I'm building a fence. But what for? I need a fence. Please, don't talk to me anymore. And with that, Aling Sebia had felt hurt. She too had gone to the bamboo clumps to fell canes. And then she began to thrust them into the ground. Same straight line as Aling Biang's but from the opposite end. Not long after the completion of the fence, Aling Biang's husband disappeared and never came back. Aling Biang took the matter passively and made no effort to find him. She had become a hardened woman. Months passed, and each woman lived as though the other were non-existent. One afternoon, Aling Biang heard cries from Aling Sebia. Aling Biang stood there by the window a long time. She knew whose child it was that was coming. She stood motionless, the wind brushing her face coldly. What did she care of Aling Sebia? Her body struck against her child's as she did so, and the child moaned. The fence grew moldy, 
and inclined to one side. The child of Aling Byung grew up into a sickly boy with hollow dark eyes and shaggy hair. And the child that was born to Aling Sebia grew up into a girl. A girl with rugged features, a singing face, and a very narrow brow. But not a word had passed across the fence since that very night. The boy Eking was not allowed to play by the roadside. For if he did, he would know what was on the other side of the fence. His realm was only his home and the little backyard. Sometimes he could even catch glimpses of a girl, dark complexioned and flat nosed. But watching that girl only intensified his loneliness. Watching that girl of whom he knew nothing about. But when his mother caught him peeping, she would scold him. I tell you not to peep through that fence. And he would just go up without answering a single word. At night, as Eking lay on the bamboo floor, notes of guitar would reach his ears. Who played the raucous notes? Who played the only music he had ever heard in his life? Poor mother, she did not know that it was she who was making the soul of this boy so cold, so barren, so desolate. Come now, Ikin. Let us now sleep. I want to sleep by the door, Nana. I want to sleep alone. Only 15. When the plane came, he stood up and moved towards the bamboo fence. He leaned against it and listened, enthralled to the music. Aling Byung was mending the fence, because now it leaned to their side and many of the old stakes had decayed. You do that, Father. It needs repair. But why? I need it. You need it. We both need it. And tonight was Christmas Eve. Eking's Christmas Eve. He must be happy tonight. He must be made happy tonight. At 2 a.m., Eking's eyes were closed and his hands were cold. His mother wept. His heartbeat was no more. Two three a.m. Only a few minutes after, from beyond the fence came the notes of a guitar. They are mocking. Who would play at such a time? Now that my son's dead. But she saw only the fence. The fence that she had built and strengthened. Stately white in the mutinal moonlight. I'm clumsy in my head.
head's a mess, cause you got me growing taller every day. We